Um, someone going to take minutes tonight? Uh, I can do that. Okay, Peter, thank you. All right. Let's see. Um, looks like we have. Let's see. Looking here, I don't think we have. We have Nora as an alternate because Patty's now a regular member. I, I move we seat Nora for for Jackie. Okay, until maybe Jackie might come on late. If they have been, wanna, yeah, we can, we we can her. <laughs> I think I don't know. Are you expected? Have you heard from Jackie? No, but we, we can do that. And uh, do I hear a second? I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> okay. Hi, no, can I, I, I myself? You, you're you're part I, of the regular members today, or your okay. voting member. <laughs> okay, but can I can I eye myself? Yeah, you can eye yourself. I <laughs> okay. I eye. <laughs> Just don't poke yourself in the eye. <laughs> All right, minutes from Wednesday, January nineteenth. Hear a motion. Give the minutes. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Okay. So moved. All right. Uh, present to speak. Doesn't look like there's anybody from the general public here tonight. Finance, uh, Carol, is there anything you want to report on tonight? Um, no, there's no change uh, since what I reported. So basically, we have a little over $1,100 left in the budget for this year. Okay. And, um, and I, I know you sent out the copies of the budget request. Uh, does anybody have any expenditures? I'm not aware that we'd authorized anything. No, nobody spent anything. <laughs> Nobody wants to spend anything. No. I, I could use a new belt sander. <laughs> I mean, something. Uh, are you going to leave it with the town when you move, Pete? <laughs> well, I suppose. <laughs> Carol, do you want to just mention what you did with the budget request? Our final. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, Kathy, you sent that out along with it. So if anybody has any questions, basically we're not bound by the amounts that we show as a breakdown of, of the fifteen hundred dollars. That's just sort of a, a rough indication of what we might spend uh, on different areas. Um, I know Kathy. I, we said we'd be happy to talk with them. Um, I have something else I'd prefer to do uh, tomorrow night. And Kathy also has another meeting that she wants to Zoom to. Um, I think what, since there's no increase, I doubt that it's gonna, there's going to be much controversy over our budget. Um, I, did, I did abbreviate CACAWIC and CLCC, but I think they can, they're used to seeing this, these uh, you know, organizational names. Um, so I don't know if, if anybody would be available to go to the Board of Finance meeting tomorrow night. Um, I forget what other groups are on. The, um, there, it's it's a, a number of, uh, it's, that night is elected officials and commissions. So, um, and we're, we're pro probably two thirds of the way down the list in terms of commissions, but um, yeah. That's where we stand. If anybody has any questions or comments on the budget proposal, I'd be happy to speak to them. Uh, I did put a note at the bottom um, because the fiscal year 2021, um, we got a transfer in of um, monies to cover of $5,000 to be used toward the appraisal of the Talmadge property. And um, in order for them to be able to compare apples to apples, I thought it would be helpful if they knew how much we had spent out of our regular portion of the budget and how much was spent on the appraisal. Um, so they could you know, 
compare it with, with the prior, see what the actual prior year's expenses were on our normal $1,500 originally approved budget. Thanks, Carol. Thanks for putting this together and sending it on to Board of Finance. So the yeah. meeting for Board of Finance is tomorrow night. It's tomorrow night, yeah. Yeah, oh. they never have any questions on our budgets. No. I don't I don't think it's, uh, you know. Chris, I, Christine and I will probably be uh, attending. And Christine um, probably be there for registrars and voters, won't she? Uh, probably. Uh, so, you know, I, I can, I can, pipe up if uh, need be. Okay, that'd be great, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate that. So, all right. Um, moving on to old business, Talmadge Estate property. Have not heard anything yet from DEEP on the uh, grant application. Um, properties management, Fenton Ruby Park and Drobney Sanctuary. Um, there's still a tree down between Taylor Pond Trail and Ruby Trail. Mm -hmm. So one of these days, if um, it's gonna take a chainsaw to move that one. So somebody wants to get together. Um, on, the, uh, on the connector there trail, you mean? Yeah. 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 Maybe after this rain next week. Okay. Uh, I might be able to get out there. Okay. Right. How big of a tree? How big of a tree? Um, oh. It's pretty. It's pretty big. It's going to. Is it a foot it. through? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'll I'll get Christine to go with me. She doesn't like me to go out by myself. Okay. Well, if you let me, let me know, Bob. I can go out there too. Um, and I keep thinking we should maybe do some more to block off the uh, access uh, or the Julius Trail underneath that big widowmaker hanging up there. I was thinking maybe some branches from the top of the tree could be significantly sized branches could be cut and then hauled across the trail there. Just give people more work if they really want to open up a trail into there. Yeah, keep, right. us, keep us posted too, because we have a chainsaw and we could come down. Mark and I could come down. I can move stuff he can saw. Okay. So I know we have a, a longer weekend this weekend, um, but I don't know the weather wise, if it's going to be too wet there. Are you going to be off um, for school vacation next week? Is there, I'm just, just curious. I, I just have one day, I just have Monday off. Oh, wow, okay. So, mm, right. well, um, but we're open in the morning. So if anybody give a hand. Okay. Well, Bob, if you go out, you know, want to send out a quick notice if anybody's available, maybe we can, you know, show up if, if we can. Um, yeah, I can do that. Patty, do you want to report on the chairs? <laughs> Sad, I, I missed that. I'm sorry. I wish I could have helped. I don't know, but they're back. They're all set again. Jamie was out there today and she saw them right where they belong. I thought Kathy had done it. I don't, they were down almost into the pond. Well, the ice on the ice of Taylor Pond all the way down. I don't, can't imagine <laughs> who would have done it. Right, and they didn't blow, Patty? I don't think blown. so, they're too heavy. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, but. some Yahoo's pushed them down the hill, obviously, and then someone else felt uh, like they ought to put them back. Those, those chairs were still originally supposed to have gone out on the Julius Trail on the alongside the, the river out there. That's what the... Uh, that's where Bill Such, who uh, donated the chairs, suggested they get put. So, but uh, we never got them any further than than Taylor Pond. Well, it's Actually, a long yeah, it's had, yeah, Historically, it's a we had the had the Boy Scouts haul them, pick them up, and and haul them uh, out there. And they, I don't know, they got the message mixed up or didn't feel like moving it any further. But they got them as far as far as Taylor Pond and left them there. But so there they've been maybe sometime we could still roll them out there and put them along the river it's harder for them to roll them into the river where they are now so maybe they're better yeah. off where they are well, we'll probably have to be careful how close we get them to the river too seeing as how much the river and streams came up this summer oh. <laughs> yeah 
All right, great. Um, Knowlton Preserve, Talmadge Track. Uh, we did install a new trail sign on Marsh Road on that entrance to the Nitluck Trail. And um, and that's the QR, Q, QRI sign map and trail map, right? Yeah, the QR coded sign. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, it's for uh, all the properties, Knowlton Talmadge, it shows everything. But we did install one on Marsh Road. And at the at the blue trail at the blue trail yeah. start. Yep. Yeah. And the um, Nipmuc Trail between Marsh and Mason Road, there was a large blowdown and Chris and I went out yesterday with the chainsaw and we took care of that. So, and that's all I have to report on maintenance. Parking lot signage. Uh, we did get a quote from signs of all kinds. If we were to replicate the Talmadge sign, excuse me, the Knowlton sign that has the acknowledgement for DEEP, as well as uh, the acknowledgement to Connecticut Forest and Parks and uh, Joshua's Trust, because as you probably remember, it's kind of a two part sign. We've got the top part that's the acknowledgement for DEEP, and then we have a smaller sign below that's the acknowledgement for the other two organizations. If we were to replicate that again, it would cost $150. If yeah, we, they, do we need to do any we do we need to replace the, the existing signs? Are they in poor condition or no? No, this is it. We were talking about the parking lot sign. Yeah. Well, so I yeah. It, hang on just a second, Carol. If yeah. we if we were to use the same signage, it would cost $150 because they already have a lot of that information on the computer system. If we make any changes, they're going to charge us for setup, just so yeah. you know. Yeah, I understand that. Because I think the intent, I, I guess my concept of the intent for the parking lot signage um, is that it's primarily to say park here for both properties. Um, and as it, and we could also include the, the acknowledgement of the funding from the state. But I think, I, and this would be fairly limited in, in I would just say parking for, um, Knowlton, uh, Knowlton Preserve and Talmadge Tract, properties acquired with, um, with funding assistance from, and then the state, the language that, that we would use for DEP. And I think that would be sufficient, but it's, it's not something that's really required to meet DEP standards because we've already done that with the existing signage. So I, I don't think we need to, and I don't think we would want to put um, the other funding sources because they don't apply to to both properties they only apply to the Knowlton and they, the CFPA money came is because the of we granted them in the in exchange for granting an easement permanent easement for the Nipmuc trail through there um, and Joshua's trust just out of the kindness of their hearts but I, I think we want to keep it simple and I don't think it would be terribly expensive um, but that's you know that's my my feeling on it um, because we will if we will be doing other signage in the future and we have met all of the uh, some signage requirements already for um, for deep for the deep funding anybody else have some ideas or thoughts on signage in that parking area on mason road uh, re refresh me again what is it we're trying to do here we're trying to acknowledge well, we don't have, there's no sign there now, right? There's no, no sign, there. there's no. no sign in the parking lot right now. So when people pull in there, they don't know, first of all, that it's town property. They don't know what the parking is for. Um, so one of the thoughts was to put something in the parking lot, that or even maybe, maybe more of a kiosk where you could post other information like we do at the park. Um, about other things that are coming up or events and so on, as well as trail map there. So it's just a, an idea to put up um, another area or a kiosk, if you will, and put signage in there that acknowledges the Knowlton and the Talmadge parcels. That's, that's not what I was, I understood you, your intentions were, Kathy. Kathy, I thought we were wanted to put something right on the road, which is, is what uh, D prefers they want it something that's clearly visible um, and that and it could go right next to uh, 
it's a, you know, if that if that's if, if we're just going to put it for a kiosk, I don't think we need to put the acknowledgement to deep. If the intent is to have you know make clear to the public again that we receive the, the deep funding, then I think it needs to go right right by the road where it's clearly visible. I thought that was what the intent was. Um, so you know maybe I'm a little confused. Well, I think it's going to be. It, it might be better to place it within the parking lot so when people pull in, they can see it. If it's on the road, um, people can get out of the car and start on the trail and never see the sign. So I think I personally- I guess, I don't know. I think it would make more sense to have it out on the road so that people know that this is what the, par the parking area is for because, you know, rather than, than uh, I don't know. I guess I'm a little, just a little bit confused about uh, what the, the intent of this whole project is? Well, originally, Carol, this idea came up because when we were doing the grant application, it kind of came to mind that the way, the places that we've put the signage on the Knowlton parcel on both ends of the Nipmuc Trail is not anywhere near the parking area. And Deep really would like to have the signage Placed by where people park, and that's that's why this came up originally was to put an additional sign at the parking lot on the Knowlton property, so that when people park there, they they understood you know where that funding came for for the uh, Knowlton parcel. So, well, was, yeah. ahead, and I, th I think one of the the things that kind of was crossing everybody's mind also. You pull into the parking lot and you really don't know where that trail starts. Mm -hmm. yeah, that and that's why last time we had talked about perhaps going out, if we put that sign up, we could start, we could reposition the uh, start of that trail mm -hmm. right in the parking lot. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Bob. And actually I was talking with Kathy also about seeing if, there, if we could see if there's a way that we could, uh, we could, turn that trail into a loop trail um, because I find I personally given the given the way they maintain the unpaved roads in this town there's a lot of loose stone and stuff and I, I find it um, both both a little bit difficult walking and um, and not very attractive to have to come back by the road if you want to just go up the Knowlton and, and come back and it's, I'd like to see if there would be some way we could put uh, the, a return trail that goes off of the blue trail and comes back paralleling the road, comes back to the parking lot. So it would make a more of a loop that's, that is entirely within the woods, if that's feasible. Um, but I, we haven't, we'd need obviously to go out and, and look at the terrain and walk it and see if that's possible. I also think it would be nice to put, um, uh, as people enter that trail from the parking lot, if we have just an arrow that says, to Nipmuc Trail because that's the, I think there are people that walk there and we might want to actually put, um, I, I'm thinking a sign and what the deep says, the public access signage must be located on the grant applicant's property and should be clearly visible from the roadway and parking area. So that's why, you know, it might be, I think, you know, I think we need to give some thought. I don't, I think we could easily afford to do a sign um, now uh, and out of this year's budget, and we probably should be trying to use up some more of this year's budget because we'll we expect to have other expenses next year. So. Kathy, the, the $150 you mentioned, the, the signs we get now are in two parts, right? Right. The thing with the addendum, is that is that what we're talking about? Is that what the $150 would cover? Yes. It would still be in two parts. It would be it would be in two parts. I, I could ask them, you know, if we wanted to, I suppose we could make one large sign. Yeah. Um, thanks, Carol. That's yeah. great. Um, <laughs> okay. so you can see there's two signs. There's one that's, I think, 11 by 17. And I forget what the other size is. But, um, you know, we could ask them to make one full sign. And we certainly can get more quotes. I mean, I just, the Knowlton Preserve sign is 24 by 32, and the Joshua's Trust sign is 12 by 24. Okay, thank you. All right, so the uh, they here. cost a hundred for one and the and 50 for the other, and there was a setup. There would be an additional setup cost, um, and 
in the past, the setup has been something along the lines of 50 bucks. Um, I, I looked at, yeah, uh, charge for setup was in the past was, was $50. So it, it, you know, the whole thing would not be, you know, an awful lot of money, mm -hmm. but maybe I'd be happy to kind of draft something up for people to, to, you know, to send out people look at or to bring to the next meeting. So just so we have a point of discussion, but I think it's more to inform the public that this is the place that they can park for the, for those properties and, um, and, and not so much to, um, to acknowledge the deep funding, but it doesn't hurt to do that because if they ever come out to inspect, although we have met all the requirements that we have. I would say let's do a let's do the signs we've got them. The two signs we've got are at, at trails that uh, that enter the the property, but they're nowhere near the center of where most of the hiking activity takes place, which is at the Talmadge and the and the parking area. So if we put a sign just like we've got two parts up against the where the, they pile the stone walls on the north side of the parking lot, where it now says park closes or trails close at dusk or whatever, uh, people coming in will see that and will make DEP happy if they have a check on it. And it will just give acknowledgement to all, all sources. Yeah, we, but can, Pete we can put small trail signs we can put another trail through the woods, straight through where people have been shortcutting anyway, or a little arrow. Those are things we can make homemade and just throw oh, yeah. up on the tree there. So absolutely, um, that would be my recommendation. Yeah. Uh, Anybody uh, else, Bob? Yeah, I, I I would go along with what Pete's saying. You know, why pay another setup fee when we already have it? One hundred and fifty dollars isn't that much for the sign. Yeah. The only the only problem with that is that we want to indicate that the parking is for both Knowlton and Talmadge. And that's not clear. Uh, if, we use, if we use the Knowlton sign as it previ as previously exists, we're not indicating that it's also parking for Talmadge, which I think is very important because we have no other parking lot to serve the Talmadge property. Our intent is to use this parking area for both trails so I think it would be. I would suggest that we just not use the full names of the of the properties. But and Kathy, and you were indicating that it might be nice to indicate that this is the town of Willington. Um, and yeah, I would suggest that we just say um, the Knowlton Preserve and Talmadge Tract parking for both of those properties to emphasize that that that's where you park for Talmadge as well. And, and that, that's in, independent of whether we get grant funding for the other parcel. Uh, and I don't think the, the additional 50 or $75 it would cost for setup would, be, would, would break the bank. As a matter of fact, we are unlikely to spend the $1,100 we have. It's already February. And uh, what happens is we get to the end of the year and we say, oh gosh, we should have spent money. We went and asked them for 1500 and we aren't spending it, blah, blah, blah. So. <laughs> Anybody I don't else? think I don't think expenses is, is, is an issue. Anybody else want to chime in? I think we can make a homemade parking signs. We can route out a couple of homemade signs parking for Talmadge and Knowlton property. Hang that below the the two posts that we have the 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 big sign as as the others up there. We can put arrows to the Tal Talmadge trailhead. Um, hopefully, we will have. Uh, not hopefully. It is to be hoped that we have access to uh, the next Talmadge property um, right across the street from there, so we can put a sign to uh, point in that direction also. Well, we'll have to, if we um, do get deep funding, what we'll have to do on the new Talmadge parcel is we'll have to erect a sign very similar to the Knowlton sign, basically, that acknowledges mm -hmm. the um, and it will, it should be visible from the parking lot. So when you park there, our intention was to start the trail there for the new estate, the Talmadge estate property. So you should be able to see that big sign from the parking lot as well. Yeah. I'll be the opposite side of the road from the parking lot, directly opposite the parking lot or as close there too as possible, Kathy? Um, yeah, yeah, it, it's pretty easy. I mean, you look right across in the parking lot, you're looking at where the trailhead would start. Yeah, and if there's a stone, there's stone like a 
old stone wall right there. Yeah. And of course, then the, the family wishes to have the, the if the, this thing goes through, the, the family wants the entire parcel to be named after both Dan, Daniel and Eleanor Talmadge. So we will have to redo the existing sign on the, um, on the present Talmadge tract as well. Um, but I think, and that, um, I think the, the cost, I'm not concerned about the, the setup cost. I'm concerned about, you know, to think through what it is we're trying to accomplish. Um, I think twofold is that, that we make sure that, it, that people are aware that it's parking for both properties. And, um, and if we want to um, pay homage to deep <laughs> on, the, on the side as well, then we wanna meet their standards, which are to make it clearly visible from the roadway parking area and, uh, and have the, the requisite language. That's where I'm coming from, so. Um, have you, Carol, have you seen it since they took the... Um... No, I went, out, went, I went to go out there today to, to look and I didn't have a chance to. Yeah, because it's, you know, it's just a big open square now. And, yeah. you know, it's pretty easy to see any of the sides of it, um, whether you're looking straight on into it or either edge, um, you can see. So, you know, you could put a sign in any of those areas. Um, yeah. Either yeah, and we, so that and we would could be put on the road. Be, may, but it would be possible to put put uh, uh, parking signs with an arrow, both coming both directions. So as you come the, up the road from either direction, that you see a sign pointing to the parking lot um, as people come in, and then we, and um, I don't know. I, yeah, you could do that. You know, there's large enough trees on trees that we could just, you know. And I, I have. I think we talked about doing that. So that's yeah. a matter of, of when we get some of this other stuff sorted out. It's easy to slap a couple of parking signs on. Yeah, and I can I can do the painting of the routing. I still have. I, assuming the paint you gave me is still good, and I have your little brushes in case you can't find them. They've been in my basement on the ping pong table for <laughs> several years now since I since I I painted the sign for the parking lot. So um, I'd be happy to do to do some of that uh, paint the yellow on some of those other signs so they're more clearly visible. Uh, we all so I think I think what we have to decide, and we don't have to decide it tonight. There's no rush is we have to decide uh, eventually on what the sign will say and yeah. probably you know get a general idea of where it would be located. We can reroute the beginning of the trail. That's not a problem. And if we decide in the future to make it a loop trail, that's gonna be a little more work. Um, it's gonna take some planning and some work and then we'll have to redo all of the signage because of the, you know, so that's gonna take some extra thought. but. To put a sign there now, um, in the next few months, you know, if we come up with the language. Um, now, Peter, I heard you say you think I'm just um, reiterating. So please tell me if I'm wrong. You think that it should just be what the current note and sign says. Carol's suggesting that it say something about the Talmadge and the Knowlton. Yeah, I think that's very important because it, particularly in view, Kathy, of what we said in our in the grant proposal to the state about the, the parking area serving both properties and to encourage people to for people to know that because it does it, it provides the easiest access to the Knowlton trip to the Knowlton tract. But um, we're we're saying to the state that that parking area serves all of the uh, town owned properties. And I well, think and, you should mention both. Yeah. Oh, well, Peter. I, did, I can put. Yeah. I mean, Peter did mention too. You could put another smaller sign at the bottom with parking for Knowlton and Talmadge. And um, if you're posting a trail map sign there, it shows all the properties. Right. Yeah. So, anybody else um, have any thoughts on the actual verbiage of the sign? I would. Anybody but if you're else? All right, if, I, if I draft something up in very rough um, uh, and, you know, just to run it by you for, for possible signage, I don't think it's going to be hor horrendously expensive to do this. Um, and yeah, why, why don't you draft something up and maybe send it over to signs of all kinds and see if you can get a quote uh -huh. on it? I'll, I'll run it by, by folks. If, if anybody is interested, I can... I can send it out to all of you for comment, but just okay. to, yeah, just to, just to see how it would play out. Um, 
but I think I think that's important in the context of the grant proposal and and meeting state requirements and, um, as well. All right, so we'll table this until next meeting. Is that okay? We'll we'll come up with some verbiage that we can. Um, Carol, come up with something and she'll send it around before the meeting. You can take a look at it and see what we can discuss in March. And I could I could also run it by by Jeff to see you know approximately what it would cost and um, it, it, that that'll depend somewhat on how large a sign it would be. I think it'd be more like the more the, more like the same size as sizes were oil Knowlton, but uh, but it's not going to be but outside the limits of our budget current available funds. Okay, Carol, thank you. Um, we're gonna move on to park maintenance and uh, responsibility trail stewards. I had sent you a draft of something that um, we came up with that was based on information that Peter and I had gotten from several sources one of them was Joshua's track and the other was the town of Tallinn has the uh, Tallinn Conservation Corps. Bob Rubino is their head steward and he had forwarded some information that outlined some uh, responsibilities. So the, the thought is to see if we can um, get some volunteers who might steward the individual trails and then also a person that would be responsible for overseeing those trail stewards, who would be the head steward, um, came up with some thoughts about what those responsibilities would be. Has anybody had a chance to look at this and have any comment? I looked it at looks, it brief, briefly. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. pretty all-inclusive, really. Yep, yeah. straightforward. Yeah, I think I thought it was great. Um, uh, obviously, we could. There's several ways we could advertise this. Um, we have an opportunity coming up in April for the Wellington Wire. Uh, we can post it at the uh, Fenton Ruby Park. Uh, I can see if we can get this out on the listserv, just the general e alerts that go out for the town. Uh, I don't know if they can do the whole thing. If it's you know, if it's if the, the whole page is too long to put on something like that. Town also has a Facebook page, which is probably going to be too lengthy for. Um, but but I could work on just reducing it down to some bold points for like the Facebook page and and so on. <coughs> Any other thoughts on that? Oh, I think Bob said complete. it's very very complete and uh, a lot of detail and very nice, but. It it's a dream to think someone's going to come up here and say, I want to be the head steward, but I guess there's no harm in trying. Yeah. Well, Dave and I might be willing to steward the Knowlton Trail. We say that's with the one that's within our physical capabilities to manage. <laughs> that's about it. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think we need we really we really need to need to rally support. And a part of it is when the it's unrealistic i think at this point to expect that the town is going to do anything about increasing the number of people in the public works department because it's because of of cost and um the recreation departments a lot of the recreation facilities are maintained by volunteers right kathy um yeah they and so we've you know we've talked at least i've talked in the past about trying to to develop a friends of the park Parks as a uh, organization, and and that hasn't as has, nobody's wanted to to sort of take that and run with it. But I think that's the kind of thing that we really need to do is to try and put together a, um, some volunteers. And I think part of the problem is that that people are not as aware of the Knowlton and Talmadge properties and the needs there uh, because people tend to go to Fenton Ruby because they know it. Um, and one of the things I've meant to do, and I think that I think we should be doing at Fenton Ruby is putting up a sign that's saying visit. And I started drafting everything, something like visit Willington's other parks and um, directing people um, with maybe a tear off sheet that gives them directions on how to get from Fenton Ruby to to the Knowlton and Talmadge properties if they want to try hiking those as well. Um, but, so I think there are there are a lot, a lot of things we could do in terms of publicity. Um, 
And it's important to increase the base of volunteer support because realistically, uh, many of us who are sitting here tonight as members of the Conservation Commission are not gonna be here um, a few years down the road, at least on, <laughs> at least on, as members of the Com Conservation Commission, if at all. So, it's you know, we, we, we need to, we really need to, to do some recruiting of people who, um, who still, see if we can find some retired folks who are looking to something to do, husbands, wives who's, who would like their husbands to be out of the house, um, helping to cut down trees instead of driving them crazy because they're newly retired. And there gotta be some folks like that out there who like to walk yeah. our property, <laughs> so, yeah. so, you know, but I, I think that we, we've, this is something we know that it's difficult to do and we've, we've kind of not paid attention to in the past, but we're getting to a point where we really need to look to the future and, and how we're going to be staffing uh, the Conservation Commission and it, all of its responsibilities, particularly the, the maintenance problem issues that we have, so. Thanks, Carol. Anybody else good start. have some thoughts on this, just in general? Well, I guess let's just publicize this, as you mentioned, and let's see where that goes. Maybe post uh, post uh, something that was me mentioned too in the park. <laughs> I think it's just a matter of putting it out there as many places as you can. Um, that's that's the only thing that you can do. Yeah, and actually uh, maybe we could do uh, ab abbreviated versions uh, posted in the library, uh, on the library bulletin board um, and any other places in town, you know, with some of the other uh, business, business places, if they have bulletin boards and are willing to do that kind of thing, uh, places where people go, um, you know, in town, where they at the post office and then there's an outdoor oh, right. um, case at the town office building as well we could post it there yeah um we could also make i can make up some extra copies um and just leave them at the post office like they do the neighbor's paper and stuff too you know people could just pull you know take it with them instead of trying to read it while they're there that's what we do with the uh, newsletter for the Historical Society, Kathy. In the case of looking for people for these responsibilities, the, the, the major market or, uh, you're gonna get for or catch the attention of people is people that use the parks. Those that have never been yeah. out there to the park or any of the property, yeah. isn't gonna do any good to have them see a piece of paper on a bulletin board, say, hey, we wanna steward the trails. You know, duh, what trails? So yeah. that the people well, were- the people we're you know looking for are most likely have been in the park, will be in the park, and we'll see them. We'll see something there. Yeah, and I, I, by prompts, I will also draft you for the next meeting. I started doing something, and you know, something like, except that I got hung up on, uh, you know, we we'll visit Willington's other parks, <laughs> kind of thing. And, uh, but, but I was thinking I had, I spent a lot of time on directions on how to get from Fenton Fent Ruby down to, to see those other properties. And, but I was thinking maybe if we had, you know, you could, you could um, have tear off sheets that people could, you know, could take off the directions in, in a printed in smaller print. But, um, you know, I think that we really need to, to promote the other, the Knowlton and Talmadge uh, at the uh, by signage at Fenton Ruby because you know there have been times when when Fenton Ruby parking lot was full and maybe somebody might have gone down to the other properties had they had been aware of them they're, but they're it's they're really well kept secrets um, as far as I can see. Um, well, there, but, we do post information every uh, Willington Wire so quarterly it goes in our um, our page for the Conservation Commission. Peter has written up some um, information on all of the trail systems, including Ken Aloche, and, and that's been in there regularly. Yeah. And also it's posted on our website and it's posted on Parks and Rec. They also have links to all of our maps. Yeah. I, I know that, Kathy, but I don't, I, I, I don't know how many people, people are busy, have busy, 
really busy lives. And I don't know how many people take advantage of those sources of information. No, no, I, I'm not I, I'm not disputing what you're saying, Carol. I just mean um, those are other uh, resources. And if you want to post something at Fenton Ruby, we can certainly put it in the kiosk. I'm not sure that we can do tear off stuff yet because it's still kind of wet and rainy. There's no yeah. way to protect it. Um, but if you come up with something, you know, shoot it to me and um, we'll we'll put it in the kiosk because we have to unscrew the uh, cover to get to take it <laughs> to break it break into the side to post things right i don't yeah. know if we really need tear offs if you put a good address someone will just punch it into their phone for directions the trouble is what are you going to use for an address that's yeah that's, yeah that's the problem because okay. there is no address you know you can't say and uh, and kiss so the park doesn't really have an address and, and you know there's no way to put anything down to find it i guess right yeah that's that's the problem you know you can't uh, gps it uh, you try drive you try on gps try to get from a particular exit off a major highway to someplace else and you find can't do that you know you have to it's difficult uh, you know the uh, those things don't work as well as they might in some I, be I believe that believe it or not the uh, original talmage piece might have um a mason road address hmm. oh. um if you look on the tax assessment I believe that I can, a, yeah, I, I can check it. Yeah, and see if they have they have assigned uh, I think they have assigned street numbers to some open parcels. So I might check. Maybe we could get the the uh, assessor to see what the assessor if we could get, get numbers assigned to those properties. And then and then you know in terms of googling it, you can just put in the, the street address. The street address and it, it might bring you there. Yeah. So, yeah. You might want to look yeah, go ahead, Bob. How, how about uh, just setting up a Gmail for the uh, Conservation Commission? That's and that way that could be checked, you know, once a week or something. And that's one way of getting back to somebody that may be interested. It's not intrusive on anybody's life, uh, like a phone number is. Uh, that's what that's what the Historical Society does. Anybody that wants to, you know, has an interest in donating or something, that's where we make our contacts. And at that particular time, uh, we'll exchange uh, phone numbers to talk to them directly. Well, that's a possibility. I'm not sure I want to be checking one more email <laughs> address. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. Um, no, I'm, I'm just saying, you yeah. know. It, it works for the society. It might work in this situation. It may not. And my take is until the Willington wire is mailed to every postal uh, holder in town, it, it's, it's not a real viable way to touch base with uh, the townspeople, unfortunately. I mean, it's gotten to a point now they don't even print any uh, hard copies out to have at the town office building or the library. You, the only place you can find it is online. And it's a well-kept secret. Oh, it is. Absolutely. It really is. It's a, and, and so you can't rely on that as a way of reaching people if people don't know it's there, you know, except by word of mouth. And that's really pretty much the only way I know it knew it exists because Kathy keeps talking about the Willington Wire, <laughs> but which replaced a newsletter which used to go out quarterly, which what did reach every household in town. And so, right. you know, if we can do all we uh, we can to put information in there, and I know you guys have been very faithful about doing that, but is it really reaching people? Um, so, I don't know. Maybe we need to dress up in chicken suits or something and stand and wave at people as they go by. <laughs> I don't know. We're just like we're doing taxes this time. <laughs> yeah, no, not the Statue of Liberty thing, but. <laughs> well, try to, um, you know, if you guys think that this draft is ready to put out there, you know, we don't have to, we're not making any changes. Um, I'll send it back out without the draft information on it. And if you have opportunities to share it with people you know or post it in places you go, um, 
feel free to do that. And I'll make an effort to get it to the post office, the town office building, the kiosk and the library, um, as well as get it onto the town website, eAlert and um, our face, the Facebook page, the town Facebook page. Um, Kathy, could, if we got, if you laminated it, could we put it in uh, the parking lot and uh, the, the trailheads for Dalton and Talmadge? Sure. Yeah. Just thin it, you know, staple it on with a heavy, I don't know, under the fence post, you know, with a heavy yeah, staple. I, I could send it down to um, anything printed and have it laminated. I mean, they, they charge us less than a dollar for each of them, so. <laughs> they charge, not worry about they the charge us way less than they should. I always feel guilty when, when I ask them, you know. Well, the latest, the, the other the latest maps we've had done there weren't laminated. They just printed them on, on some heavy duty plastic material, I think. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, th this could be printed on plastic or whatever plastic. the material yeah. is rather than the lam actual lamination of a paper copy. Yeah. Holds but then up, the, it holds up the, better. That's, that's what they sold us on back when Joe and Pam were running it. Yeah. I think that's when we, when we, when I asked for lamination of things in the past for other things I've done personally, um, that's what they end up doing is like you oh, said, no. Peter. Yeah. Kind of printing on plastic. Yeah. Yeah. But then we have to mount it on something, right? Or well, it can be standalone if you put it on a post for a while. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't do it long term, but no. I mean, hopefully we'll get some people to come forward. I mean, the thing is, if we all of a sudden have six trail stewards and we have no head steward, then we're going to have to figure out a way to have these people report back to the commission. Um, and, you know, again, our whole point here is to try to reduce some of the responsibilities we've had on our shoulders. So I'm hoping we might find somebody willing to uh, do a little bit of the organization work and, you know, kind of puts an effort into this. Who knows? We'll do is put it out there and hope. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, moving on. Town development, anything from anybody? Any news? Uh, no, not really. Uh, there's, uh, PZC is working on an awful lot of uh, new, uh, uh, how do I want to say reworking? Uh, the latest thing is uh, a, a new strategic development uh, about, we're talking about strategic development zones. Uh, the idea is to try to start streamlining the process uh, that makes it uh, more straightforward for uh, businesses to uh, get to the end, end line of uh, putting a, uh, a building up uh, so you know that there's 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 a number of things um, so you know that's that's one of them um, insofar as building no nothing uh, nothing yet we reviewed last time and I think I didn't make the meeting last night I had two meetings to go to but they uh, had a the public hearing was open for loves uh, signs on their sites, on their site there. Um, so that's, they're, they're moving right along with that. Uh, so I guess the two canopies are up, one for the gas for uh, passenger vehicles and one for uh, the trucks and the building. I think the roof may be on the building now also. Is that public hearing for the signage, signage. Still open or is that, did they I, close it? I'm not sure if they closed it or not. Uh, we got an awful lot of information the week, uh, the meeting before last night, and we requested the, the uh, foot candles that the signs are going to uh, throw out for brightness. And uh, I'm looking for, the signs that have white graphics, it's going to be 115 foot candles, which is pretty minimum, really, for a uh, commercial sign. And so they're going to be dark skies compliant. Yeah, they're going to be uh, 
they'll be easily seen during the day, but at night they uh, they uh, they look almost like they do it during the day, but the the um, the lettering glows, so the background is completely blacked out. Um, so uh, loves is you know loves and the people they're working with have been really uh, upfront about everything that they're doing up there. So um, I, I, you'd have to look, I haven't had a chance to look. I wasn't home much today. You'd have to look to see what the minutes were, see if they closed that uh, public hearing or not. I would assume they probably did. Thanks, Rob. Anything else from anybody? Talent development wise, no. Uh, collaborative organizations. Any news that anybody has from any other organizations? I did um, talk to Alan Humphrey from Wellington Park and Rec, and he and I are going to sit down sometime in March and talk a little bit more about uh, how we might collaborate in terms of using the parks and the trails and getting Parks and Rec um, involved in some of the event planning. So hopefully we'll, um, you know, have a partner in that, in that way. Yep. The um, Connecticut Trails Day is going to be coming out soon with requests for organizations that want to hold uh, a trail event to put in their advertisement. It's going to be June 4th and 5th for Connecticut Trails Day. And we've participated in the past. Um, but I was wondering, I'm going to talk to Alan to see if Park and Rec wants to be more involved in that. Um, Kathy, what were those dates? Is, is... I believe uh, June 4 and 5, Carol. Four and five. It's a weekend, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. So. The only problem with that is there's so much competition with other things. You know, it's, it's really hard to get people to come out. Um, it's almost... It's like walk the walking week October walking weekends. There, um, it's really difficult to to draw uh, a crowd any, of any kind. So it's a good thing in some ways. It's a bad thing in others because <laughs> because the what your walk is in no way unique. You're you're among you know dozens or hundreds even of of other events that going on. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, if anybody on the commission has an interest in getting more involved in, you know, um, helping to organize some kind of an event at one of, you know, the park or a, a trail walk, you know, if any of you have some desire to do that. We've had people in the past like Barbara Austin, who's still available to help us um, host something at the park. She can do like a you know, spring flower walk or we could find somebody to help maybe with doing a bird walk, you know. So if anybody's interested in kind of spearheading that um, from our commission, just, just let me know. Um, Regional Pollinator Pathway Initiative. I had talked a little bit about this last time and um, the towns of Wyndham, Chaplin, Ashford and Mansfield um, are cooperating right now to share information about what they're doing in terms of encouraging residents uh, to plant native plants, to think about how to support pollinators, you know, butterflies and native bees. And there was a meeting today at five o'clock that I attended. Um, and people were just sharing information about what's going on. There's going to be a pollinator pathway uh, talk that's free in Stafford Springs coming up in April. Um, Ashford is also looking to do some pollinator garden walks. Uh, we talked about, you know, how they're getting information out to residents. Some towns are using, you know, putting up a table at the post office and just handing out information. Uh, Joshua's track, there was a representative, Ada was there, and she talked about uh, Joshua's Track has put up pollinator pathway signs on all of their properties, and those signs are available. Um, you can purchase them from the 
call them a your pathway organization. They're like $10 for a six inch sign, um, $20 for a 12 inch sign. And I just had a thought, maybe we might want to purchase some to put up on the open space properties, especially where we have trails. Because as long as you have native plants, whether they're trees, shrubs, I mean, we're really those open space properties are really good pathways for pollinators. So it might be some way that we can at least people who come to the trail systems can kind of see, um, kind of pique their interest, you know, what's a pollinator pathway? They might go on the website. There's a website address for the, uh, the pollinator pathway initiative on those signs. So it's just a thought we could, you know, purchase some signs if we wanted to and put them up at the properties. And that might be a good topic to for for a, um, a program of some sort, and could be not necessarily held outdoors, but all, but something be held at the at the library. There was a really good article. I think it was let me. I'm not sure what issue, but the, the publication from from Last Green Valley had a big article about pollinators. Mm. I think probably guessing maybe last spring or summer. Um, and it does talk, it also talks about the pollinator pathway of Wyndham and Chaplin and, and the other towns are participating in. But I wondered if they, they, if it might be possible for them to direct us to someone who might be, do, who might do a program on pollinators and, and you know, but plants, planting, uh, uh, plants in your, in your yard or your garden and that kind of thing that might draw some interest if it were probably properly publicized. So something to think about in terms of, a, of, of some kind of educational event, um, because that is, a, is something that a lot of people are interested in now. People are becoming more aware of the importance of pollination and, and, and keep, giving us food to eat among other things. <laughs> we're really dependent. People don't understand how dependent we are on pollinators for food supply and other things. It's, so. You know. The other part of the initiative is about trying to get people to have less lawn, you know, less lawn means less fertilizer, less chemicals. Um, and it also helps with watershed management because, you know, a crop lawn doesn't help to uh, slow down water, you know, when you have storm events and so on, you know, you're better off having gardens and meadows and forests. So a lot of that has a lot of positive aspects to it, not just, you know, just around pollinators itself. Yeah. So, just thought it would be something, I, I agree with you, Carol, it would, make, it would make for a good event. I think that it would be something that would, might be of interest to, to you know, families, um, mm -hmm. gardening and those kinds of things, what people can do on their own properties. Yeah, so maybe an early spring, a, a spring, a spring event um, or, you know, can't wait till spring is here event <laughs> to have in January or February so people can think about what they want to plant in the spring. Uh, just thought that might be a possible, we haven't done an, an educational event in a long time. And uh, you know, just brought to mind that this might be a topic, might be of interest to people. Okay, um, membership. Um, just wanted to mention that on the 7th of February, the Board of Selectmen did appoint Patty officially as a regular member. Uh, her term will expire 12-1-22 since she's filling Julia's term. Mm. And uh, Carol and Jackie, um, I know there was a, a question about the terms that the Board of Selectmen had granted to you. and. I worked with Robin Campbell on this and she finally got a letter over to the Board of Selectmen to let them know that there was an error when she had sent information over for them. And um, I expect that at the Board of Selectmen meeting on the 22nd, they're gonna be correcting your term, Carol, your and Jackie's term would start 12-2-21 and end 12-1-24. Okay. And actually all of our terms should be starting on the 2nd of December, because they all expire on December 1st, three years later. And we're gonna get all of that corrected. And when that's what's official, I'll make sure that that gets put on our website and I'll send you that information out on our membership list. I'll, I'll you know, make sure everybody's got it. 
Sounds good. Thanks. Okay. And anything under others or anything anybody wanted to, to add? Um, I don't know if this is the appropriate time. I just wanted to say, um, as far as the flyers at Fenton Ruby, I don't know if this is new business, but I know you, you dropped the flyers off. How often should the flyers, how often do they, I, I've been, gone twice in, two, in the two weeks. So um, do, you know, do you have an idea of how often? Oh, you mean in terms of the trail guides, putting them in the box? Yeah. How, how long does it take before they're gone? <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't um, know what to say. That's a good question. I, I think in the summer, they probably go quicker than in the winter. Right, right. Okay. And then um, as far as the um, the sign-in sheets, the um, trail records, should I keep those? And would you want me to do back-to-back -back copies? I do have access to a printer or is, do you want, so I, I'm going to keep the ones that are filled. You use yeah, that what data. We, what we've done in the past, Nora, is um, we just collect the originals and then we keep them in a file in the okay. cabinet at the town office building in case we want to, you know, add up the data at some okay. point. So if you want to just hang on to the originals and then Maybe when we start meeting in person or, you know, you and I can trade them and I can bring them over to the town office building. Okay. Do you mind hanging on to them? I do not mind hang, hanging on to them. I just was wondering, have you done back to back before or should, do you, you strictly mean, want one sided? Oh, you, you could do that if you okay. um, wanted to do that. I see what you're saying. Yeah. That way we'd save paper. That's a great idea. Or, I mean, I don't know if you, if that's too confusing for collecting the data or not? Okay, I'll, I'll. Yeah. all right. I mean, if some people, when they get to the end might flip it over, some might just start a new sheet, you know? <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Yeah. All right, I will add to that. I would that say if it. you're gonna do that, you're gonna make sure that it gets printed on fairly heavy duty paper, not maybe 24 pound paper. Right, okay. A little bit better for all the flipping because sometimes the the pages get dog-eared and damp Wet. and everything else anyway, so. Okay, okay. And, and right. Nora, if you end up spending any money to purchase paper, save your receipt and you can get it to Carol and you, okay. you can be reimbursed okay. for that. Okay. And we might have right. some heavier no paper because I think I got some heavier paper with the idea that the map part of the Fenton Ruby uh, things should be on slightly heavier paper than the normal 20 pounds. So I think there might be some 24 pound white paper in the, um, in the file cabinet. And we, okay. can, the we can check and see, because we might need to do a paper order at some point. We, we, but it was one year, a couple of years ago, we used up our budget by buying all kinds of paper <laughs> to, print, to print the uh, trail maps. And of course, but once we know what's happening with the with the other piece of, of the Talmadge property, we'll be, re, I think, completely redoing uh, the brochure that covers the Knowlton and Talmadge properties and probably new maps and that kind of thing. So, um, okay. yeah, well, it, I mean, I, I'll I'll make some more copies if you think I should just do one sided because of the the thickness of the paper. I can do that, too. So um. whatever. Use your judgment. If okay. There's, okay. Yeah, nothing special about it. Okay. Thank you. I, I did forget to mention, I'm sorry, when we were going over the properties um, on the Knowlton Preserve, um, Chris and I and Peter um, also said that he had noticed this. When you walk the Knowlton Spur Trail on the southeast border of that of the mm -hmm. property, um, somebody has posted two signs. One says no hunting and the other says keep out right right on the border with the uh, Knowlton Trail. And um, Chris and I did go back the other day and we walked to be sure our boundary signs are posted and everything's posted well. The person has put um, the signage on our property, on the town's property. It should be at least 30 feet back from the trail uh, where the boundary is. So. Um, I did find out from the tax assessor who owns the property. It was the property that used to belong to Gloria Cole. I don't know if mm. some of you remember, she had offered that yeah. to the town and um, yeah. it did get sold in 2020 to somebody from Ellington. So I will send that person a, 
uh, a letter just to let them know that we'd like them to remove the signs. And if they're not removed in 30 days, we're going to take them down ourselves. So is that all right with everybody? Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. And the other, the other thing that I had was um, I thought I had a ladder for your next project, for our next project, and I don't have that ladder anymore. So um, <laughs> sorry about that. I did check you on that. Been faster. So. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. Okay. okay. Um, let's see. New business communications. The only thing that was in our mailbox was a copy of a letter from a company called Brown Rudnick LLP. And it was a copy of a letter they sent to the Connecticut Siting Council. Um, there's a cell tower on Daleville Road. Um, Marilyn, you're probably familiar with this. It's um, on your road, it's a cell tower. And this company wants to increase the height of the cell tower from 104 feet to 160 feet. Uh, which basically is almost another 60 feet higher. So they're going to like add on another third. Um, and it's just an opportunity for towns to comment. It went to the Board of Selectmen, to the Land Use Office. It also went to some offices in Mansfield because it's right on pretty much on the Mansfield border. Yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to, if anybody had some concerns about that, adding on the um, to the height of that cell tower. Yeah, we got a package of paper this how thick pack uh, was it? Um, uh, Pete, that we remember the package of stuff you got that was about this thick was was sent to us also. Um, and it is it's right near the the entrance to to um, um, Wellington Oaks apartments. So Carol, you got it as a resident? No, I got it as uh, the commission. And we came in, it came in in November, but nobody told us about it until I forget what, it, what whatever the dates were. I gave it to Pete when it came in, but it was an um, extremely thick packet of, of, of uh, materials. And uh, I packed you all, carefully. The, all, all the engineering data and, and pages and pages and pages of pictures that they do here of, of suppose of the current tower from every view they could get from all around the town through the woods and what what it, you know so you can see where it was yeah carol gave that to me i think i put it in the files in the town <laughs> i said hey pete you might want to read it because i sure don't <laughs> but, but i think I, I think it's not as much concern as some because it is uh, right on the mansfield willington border so it would have minimal impact uh, because of its location on uh on uh, you know, res Willington residents. Okay, and um, then other new business. Um, Marilyn, you had mentioned this as well. Um, Connecticut um, Land Conservation Council sent out kind of an email to all of the members and just saying, you know, remember that your town has received some money from the American Rescue Plan Act, the ARPA funds, and that as conservation organizations, you may wanna keep in mind that we certainly can put in a request to use some of that funding for maintenance of town preserves, parks, um, outdoor recreation. So the town of Willington received $1.7 million and there is a commission that was appointed um, that is going to be in charge of spending that money, it has to be spent by 2024. And so there's going to be lots of different people within the town, um, you know, soliciting that committee to use some of the funding for some of their ideas and projects. So if you, if any of us, you know, come up with some thoughts or ideas, we certainly can submit to see if we can get some of that funding for something that Conservation Commission feels is important. Uh, is there a deadline for that, Kathy? Do you know? Um, I, you know, the commission, I've been kind of following their minutes. They just finally kind of finished take, you know, getting all of their members and their meeting, I believe, twice a month. Um, and anybody yeah. can, you know, go online. It's their virtual meetings. You can watch their meetings. I'm not sure if they've come up with a process of how they're going to solicit that 
those requests, you know, if there's going to be a form, how they're going to decide on, um, you know, who's going to get the funding. They've already decided um, at the town level that this is not going to go through Board of Finance. It's not going to go to town meeting. Um, basically, the commission is going to have the authority to designate where that money will go. So that's, if anybody's interested, um, if you go under boards and commissions, you can see, you know, on the town website, you can see when their meetings will be. And do you know, are there deadlines or, or, or is this money that we've already received that it is just a matter of how it's allocated or? Oh, uh, it, I, I think that the town is getting the money in two different waves, but it'll mm -hmm. ultimately add up to $1.7 million. Right. And um, some of it's been allocated already, or is it? Are there several batches? I know there was some some COVID money that was. This is different out. than that. Different, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 If you're interested, Carol, go on the website and you can read their minutes, or you can, you know. And what are they called? ARPA. It's the ARPA Commission. ARPA. Okay. Uh, committee. Excuse me. A R P A. Okay. American Rescue Plan Act. Okay. So, but I mean, if we had some something come up, if we needed something for the park, if we wanted to, I don't know. A ladder. A ladder. <laughs> I mean, I, there's a lot of money there, but there's going to be a lot of hands that want to be in that pot. For example, the ECD, um, Economic um, Development Commission, EDC, they were talking about in their at their meeting that they wanted to request almost three three hundred thousand dollars to be able to give grants to businesses that were affected by the pandemic in town. Um, you know, there might be um, fire departments. There's going to be things for the town office building. There's going to be lots of requests for this money, but it doesn't mean that we can't put in a request if we think of something that you know we don't want to have to go to town meeting for to get park and rec money for from um, and so on. Yeah, because one of the things I was thinking is that we need to um, we need to to revise uh, and update the park management plan for Knowlton and Talmadge mm -hmm. and uh, include the new property, assuming we acquire it. Um, and and so that would be if there might be an opportunity to uh, put in for that for updating the management plan to in, and including the, a plan for the new parcel and also development of the trail on that property. So we might be able to put together a proposal for that, which would allow us to not draw down uh, park and rec uh, 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 account. Yeah, that's a good thought. I mean, certainly can make a case that the pandemic has put more demand on usage, park usage, trail usage. Uh, it's important to give people those recreational opportunities. So, you know, there's a good, I think we have valid reasons why this should come from that pot of money. Yeah, that's, that was just a thought because the plan expires in 2022. So we should be, be um, and, and actually in the grant application, we indicated that if we acquired the, the additional Talmadge tract, that it would be, uh, we would have, uh, have that added to and a plan created for uh, the management plan that exists and is due for renewal at that point. Any other thoughts people want to add before we adjourn? No. Yeah, Bob? No, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, Good to see you all. Nice to see meeting. you in person sometime. <laughs> no. Stay warm, stay safe. Okay, yep. does anybody want to make a, a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, guys. Have Aye. a good month. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Eight, 16. Where are I? Leave. There hey, I go. Peter, can I ask you a quick question? Before uh, I before I leave this Zoom meeting, 
You can you, even ask me a, a long question. A long question? <laughs> when sure. you used to run the meetings on Zoom, did you stop the recording before you hit end or did you just end the meeting and the recording stops itself? Remember? I think, yeah. Well, when I saw a recording button, I would stop the recording, I think, yeah. At the end, before you hit end? Um, yeah, because if you end it, you're shut off completely. There was sometimes that we rambled on afterwards. So right now you're still recording, right? You right. have a record button up at the top there somewhere? I do. I can shut it off, but that's what you would have done? Sure. Yeah. I mean, okay. yeah. I mean, theoretically, we could stay here talking the rest of the night after you stop the recording. <laughs> well, if I ended the meeting, I'm assuming the recording stops as well. But well, the only oh, well, yes, I guess it probably will. The, re the reason I'm asking is last time we held our meeting, I know I hit the recording button and then at the end I stopped recording and then I ended the meeting and the next day Kelsey said that she couldn't find the recording. Oh yeah, I remember you saying that, yeah. So that's why I was asking if you just normally stop the recording before you end the meeting. I think so, yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I did. All right, I'm going to do that. All right.